Welcome to Sequel Podcast. I'm Matt Bonta. And Ivy Chrysostomo. Back for episode 123. Your second time here. One, two, three. One, two, three. At 533. <laughs> Sounds like we're going to start breaking into a rap song. Well, if I could rap, but I can't. I could not. I suck at, well, I used to be decent when I was a kid, but now I'm like, I can't. Oh, you could rap. No, I used to <laughs> when I was a kid. Right, that's what I'm saying. You like you could rap. Back then. What happened? Um. Nothing. Nothing happened. I just never. Do you have any hits that you can drop? Hell no. <laughs> nope. You keep rubbing your eye. I I know because I changed my contact because I lost one last night. I was so tired, and then I put in a new one. But I don't know what's going on with it. Like, I'm seeing fuzzy things. Like, I had to take my contacts off while I was driving on the freeway. You took it off while driving on the freeway? Yeah. Or you had to take it off before driving on the freeway? Nope, and I put solution on it. Well, Danny put solution on it, and I put it back on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, you, like, I'm you just did driver. that on the way over is what you're saying? Yeah. I'm gonna burp. I'm a safe driver. Uh. Yeah. So... <laughs> Um, so did you bring any topics today? Alright, if you could own a business, what business would it be? Would I own? Mm -hmm. uh, well, clearly a film production company, which I kind of do own already. No, that's it though? I mean, like, if you, if money was no object and oh, well, if money was loyalty no object, I'd be was making no movies. object. Loyalty? Yeah. Loyalty to what? People showing up and, you know, if you have, you know. You mean like if, if like I were to have a business regardless of whether I had customers or workers? Both. <laughs> so I'm sitting there by myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, well, I mean, that kind of sounds like my production company right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> no, that's all I want to do. That's all I'm interested in doing. Is there anything in particular you would want to do? Like if you could only do specifically movies... Or specifically, this podcasting. Is oh, if I get paid to podcast, that's that would be just as good as making movies. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse I feel me. Like sorry. I would probably like podcasting more than I would like actually making movies, because then you don't have to really depend on too many people. And well, no. Well, see, that's the problem. Is like, too. like if you're, so like making a movie, it's just like getting workers. Like if they don't show up, they're not going to get paid. Like, you're paying them, and they're contractually obligated. To, like, me making movies the way I am without any money is a different story, but, like, with yeah. money and making movies, you're paying someone to do a job. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's right. Because you pay people to be on the show. Where's my money? Beach better have my money. Just kidding. <laughs> There's your drop right there. <laughs> that's not original. I know. If I ever wanted to own a business... Don't you want to own a restaurant bar? I do, but then again, I kind of don't. If I ever did, if I... Okay, so it's kind of a dream that I do want to do still, but I would want it to be like that Dick's restaurant where they're just fucking rude to people. Oh, Have I heard about that? that. I haven't I seen it I, I, to... in L.A. Yeah. I just heard about that. You did? Well, I mean... It's been around for a little while. But I, I, I guess you could it. say that I just heard about it. Mm. On a podcast that I listen to. Really? God, I would love it. To be able to sit there and be like, what the fuck do you want? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. And get paid. Well, that's the idea really behind like owning people. your own business. Is like, if you're the boss, then you... If somebody comes in and they're a dick, you can be a dick to them and not have to worry about it. I mean, of yeah. course, you would pick and choose the people that you're a dick to. Yeah. I would love that. That would be great. Like, I... I, I have low tolerance for idiocy. <laughs> so if I could just tell people off, especially in restaurants. You would, so you would want to own a restaurant to do that, or would you want to own something else? <sighs> I feel like I would that. want to do something else. I feel like if I could take that, but put it into the fostering system, and just tell bio parents off, be like, look, you're a fucking idiot. That would be great. <laughs> I can't, and I won't. <laughs> Not right now, but, you know, there are times. There are times where I've been very tested. Sure. Yeah. 
But that would be a dream job. Yeah. Is to foster kids. Well, own a building that fosters kids and tells parents how it is. Be like, look, if you don't do this, this, and this, and change your freaking attitude, then no, you won't get your kid back. I won't hesitate <laughs> now. We'll call a judge right now. <laughs> Strike the fear into them. Maybe we'll have better parents around the world. Is that how it is? Is that like the um, the middleman thing? Like, uh, like when a child has to be filtered through something and given to someone like you, like, is that how that middleman works? Is like, you're not the middleman, but you got to go through a middleman. The who, social worker. Right. So and I guess, yeah, the social worker is a middleman. Our social worker right now is in slacking to say the least i feel i don't know apparently we had a new caseworker i've never even met and then the uh visitation days got switched and we didn't even know about it and it's just been crazy take his collar off Ta-da. but they they make a decision on whether or not the parents get the child back? Yeah. Well, now, I guess in turn the judge does, but they put together a story. Right. Like, um... They provide the... Yeah, the proof of whether or not they should stay or they should go. And I still think... Could you potentially be with a foster child for forever? I mean, however long forever is? Or is there a... Um... Is there a cutoff? There's a cutoff. So usually what happens is once they're taken away... They've, they get initial court dates and everything else. The first one doesn't usually pop until around three months into it to decide whether or not, you know, just kind of follow up on the case, why they were taken away, what they need to do, if their service is set up in line to help them succeed to get their kid back. Um, they kind of all filter in at that point. And then um, they usually meet again in another three months. So at the six-month mark is when they start talking about, well, what have you done the last three months to try to get your life straightened? Um, and then if they don't um, do that, then if they have no a, improvement. Exactly. On the there's, parents' part. Exactly. If there's no improvement on the parents' part, then they start talking about permanency. So permanency is whether or not they're just going to go into adoption or see if there's another family that they could be. So you um, can just adopt. With. After a certain amount of time, yeah. Yeah. You have no problem adopting. Um, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> it, no, it depends on the kid, really. Yeah, it depends on the kid. Like, our very first one, we would have loved Right, so if it comes them. up, then you can be like... Yeah. Like, so no, it, give it to somebody else, or we'll just yes. keep, keep them? Yes, you do get a choice. Um, except, of course, they want the kid to be with a bio family. So, if in the event that a bio family... Well, so you're saying, like... An uncle or a grandparent? Yeah, exactly. Which usually, if it's so, a blood relative is what you mean when you say bio family. Yes, okay. exactly. So, if a blood relative says at the end of the you know six months to a year is usually when the parents have to really straighten up and do the things that they need to do. And if they don't, then that's when they say, "Hey, we'll meet up in six months. If you don't do anything, then we're gonna start talking about adoption, and you know you won't be able to have your kid back." And at that point, they can contact another family member, and if the family member doesn't want them, then they usually ask the foster parents, because by that time, the foster parents have created a bond. So if the foster parents don't want them and they don't have any biological families, then yes, they usually go up for adoption. Sad day. Sad day. (laughs) There's only been... Well, the first one we would have taken in a heartbeat. Really? Yeah. It's kind of ironic. When I found out I was pregnant with Melody, don't get me wrong, love her to death, but I wanted a boy. And I've always wanted a boy first, and I also wanted my first boy to be named Aiden. But Danny did not like that, because he had The name Aiden? Yeah. He had, like, a... He had someone he knew that had a kid named Aiden, or had a family member named Aiden, something like that. So he was like, no... Nope, not Aiden. I'm like, well, that's a sad day. I Aiden's wanted... a terrible name. No, it's a great it, it's, name. It's a terrible name. No. It's a typical a t- name that someone wants to name a child that they think that they don't hear often enough, 
But that's happened so many times that now it's a really common kind of name. That's okay. I love that <laughs> name. I love the way it flows. It's a terrible name. No. Matthew's a terrible name. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... No. I'm not gonna... <laughs> I like Aiden. I like the name Aiden. I've always... Yeah, so anyway. So with Aiden, um, he ended up being our first foster child. Oh, so, so you had a like, foster child named Aiden? Uh-huh. And I, was I didn't like, know that. Was How long was be, that? For like a day? It was only for like a week. So, I mean, I guess it was too early to say whether or not we would have adopted him, but he definitely... You, when you say your first one, I think of uh, Amaya. Oh, yeah. No, not her. Um, she was the second one. But, yeah, the first one, she was... Er, he was really great. He had a happy ending, though. He um, went with his dad, and his life just totally flipped, so that's great. I have his dad on Facebook, and so it's nice to see pictures every once in a while. So he, I definitely would have. Um, the rest is. Well, you can still have kids. You still want to have kids. Yeah. Okay then. Well, mm. Aren't you trying to have kids now? It sounds like no. you're trying to have kids now. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Not until Melody's like older and in school and all that good stuff. I have that debate with myself all the time because I want them to be close in age, you know, so that she has somebody. But at the same time, I'm like. Uh-uh, paying for two diapers and, you know, wiping two kids' ass. And She's not on mm. diapers anymore. No, but that's still. Nah, be a it's handful. fine. Handful, handful. It's fine. And then I'd, I'd, I don't know, I'd, I cherish the time that I have with Melody alone when she's not in school and stuff like that, so. You wouldn't lose that. I would, in you a sense I would, not, because would then, then they would be that. so busy with each other that it, and I see it now with Melody and Steven, they run around and they play and stuff like that Isn't but she i don't super jealous of him some days but then some days <laughs> she's just like no steven you have to love me and i'm like what the hell i wanted hugs <laughs> damn it go away <laughs> so i i think i don't know i think close in age is good but i would i would it's love probably to be able really to good for her to have kid. more kids because she's a virgo she needs to be around people i know because yeah. i'm a virgo that was kind of raised singly she is an extremely social butterfly, so yeah, I could agree with that. Well, that's not always true, because I'm no social butterfly. Huh? I said that's not always true, because I'm no social butterfly. Well, she is. Her being around people is... Right, that's important. what I'm saying, is like, I kind of came up um, by myself. That's sucks and for I, you. And I have my, I mean, it, it, it doesn't suck for me, it sucks for the people in my life, where I'm kind of antisocial. Um... I have no problem <laughs> with anything. It's the people around me that are affected by my idiosyncrasies. Love me. <laughs> that's what I hear. But but just me. Yeah. And that's the problem. And but I, I know I know that that's not the way to be. But, but it's it's just kind of like that knee jerk reaction kind of Love thing. Me. <laughs> and uh, my darling friend Joanna sent me a. Uh, video of an ostrich chasing a, chasing a giraffe and it's just like let me love you <laughs> is that what the situation was <laughs> yeah that's pretty much still the situation for her that hasn't changed i was talking about the ostrich and the giraffe oh uh i'll be the ostrich <laughs> she'll be the giraffe she's taller and skinnier and i'm shorter and fatter so it works out <laughs> oh wait you don't want her to have but any other friends is that no, what you're saying she needs more friends she doesn't want any more friends she just wants you is what you're saying no, she chases people's love. Okay. Yeah. Regardless in of whether way. it's in a good way. Yeah. She loves Meaning, to be loved and accepted and be friendly. Well, not just which by is a like toxic relationships. Oh. Uh. I'm gonna You're leave saying. that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that right there. Who did you say it was? <laughs> Yolanda. Yeah, she's gonna listen to this. Uh, she listened to the last one. I'll tag her in it. I don't know. <laughs> Shout out, Yolanda. <laughs> Yeah, she's a very lovely person, and she's a catch. So if you're single and you're a guy, hey, holler. But go through me <laughs> Single first, guys so out pre- there. Yeah, let me pre-qualify first. Hit up Ivy. <laughs> she's, yeah. I'll, I'll There's your business. Dustin, whether or not you're worthy. Online uh, dating. I should. I should really have, be a Do you a have a lot of single, single friends? I wouldn't say a lot, no. I could only <laughs> name one. two off, three off the bat. All right, guys out there. Uh, single guys. And I've just got two to... Oh, well, you know, keep your options <laughs> open. Yeah. Okay. That's just like, meh. I should. I should have my own business where I cupid people. 
What's wrong with you? That it's starting to hit. It's starting to hit finally. So um, I posted also, um, but I got some retarded things. Um, This one says I'd like to hear about coaxial flutter. Um, I can only assume it has something to do with loose cables and you're getting some kind of weird feedback. What? Like uh, a coaxial cable and then you get a fluttering sound from like maybe a loose thing. Sounds dirty. Let's see. (laughs) Uh, I'm googling it so I can see what it says. Danny told me a funny, uh, damn it, what is it? This isn't about eating your own cum again, is it? Um, Danny <laughs> told me about, uh, what do you call some, like, something hairy? Like a hairy vagina? What do you call that? Uh, it starts with a C. Shit, cunt? I don't remember. No. I don't remember. But it's a something crusher, and it was pretty funny. Crusher? Yeah. It's like something crusher. <sighs> Shit. I don't remember what it was. Hairy vagina crusher. It's like a... Crushing plant? No. What is this? Africa black hairy back crusher? It... Pussy crushers make it gush? Oh, this Ew. is porn. No. hey oh. No, it was a word. I forgot what it was, but it was pretty catchy. I was kind of tempted to use it, but... Oh, coaxial flutter is a... Looks like it's a band. A band. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the fuck. Some fucking weird fucking shit. And then, why music nowadays doesn't have cowbell? Cowbell. Cowbell went out with fucking The Who. Or no, Blue Oyster Cult. You know, cowbell? Doom, 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 doom. (laughs) (laughs) uh, My age is showing. (laughs) I mean, it's before my time, too. It's before my time, too. You know, Blue Oyster Cult. Have you never seen that that uh, that SNL sketch? Maybe not. With Will Ferrell and they did the Blue Oyster Cult. They're singing "If I Can Don't Fear the Reaper." No. And it's okay. Um, well, anyways, <laughs> it's like a sketch where the one guy has just got the cowbell and he's hitting it, dun, dun, and Christopher Walken keeps coming in and he's like, "I want more cowbell. I like the cowbell. Give me more cowbell." <laughs> Okay, so what was the question? Why don't music? Why doesn't music start off with cowbells? Why music nowadays doesn't have more cowbell? Um. Because every artist has their own idea of what they want to be in there. It's a lame question. Uh, but <laughs> I don't. You I wouldn't mean, even know if there was cowbell in there or not. No, I really wouldn't. So I got this book that I'm gonna start using for my podcast. Questions for terrible people. Oh right. gosh. So I'm gonna randomly pull out a page. And we'll well, do both questions. Rude. All right. I feel like I'm being set up here. It's a trap. I don't know. I haven't looked at any of these questions. I pulled the page out. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. That's really funny. Oh, wow. This is a good one. Oh. Would you rather know the exact moment of your own death or be shown a video of exactly how it will happen? Oh. <sighs> Would I rather know the Would you rather know when you die or just how see it how it happens? I would love to... So, like, let's say, like, if it were to happen... You, don't, would, you don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow or in 50 years, but, I mean, if you watch the video, you can kind of be like, I, I kind of look like that now. <laughs> yeah, that's what's like. I feel like I'd rather... I would rather see exactly what happens. Because, I mean, otherwise I'd be, like, living in fear and dreading this day to just come. <laughs> That's awful. Yeah, like, but but then like let's say you like you see you see a video of like a car accident and you see like oh that's the car that I currently drive. It's like oh those clothes I currently have. Then it's like then it's like time to freaking live it up. It can be, <laughs> it can be happening in an hour. Same it can thing though if you know day. already. If I, if they say like oh fucking twenty twenty one or whatever. Maybe I can avoid it. I don't know. Who knows? I would. Well, let's wanna, let's yeah. say that you can't. You can't change it. I can't change yeah, it. I can't avoid it. Right. I would still want to see what happens. You'd rather like, see it than know. So they're like, okay, yep. here it is, but like, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to let you know. Yep. Because it's like, you know, I, I would love to be able to tell people, look, I'm going to die this way. I just want you to know now that blah, 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 blah. And I'd 
you know, start writing my thank you and goodbye cards right there. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, you know. I mean, you can kind of double prepare if you see it rather than know yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Because if you only know when it happens, you're not going to know how, how it happens. Or... Right. Well, I mean, the why isn't even given in the other one either. Yeah, but you won't know so. how. So by knowing how, it's like you know it's going to, like by seeing how, you know it's going to happen. I guess you could say why it and would happen. And you can kind of, really? Yeah, oh, well, I mean, like, if it's, if it's like, like a car accident. accident exactly. You would but, know like, if you have, like, a, if thing. you have, like, some kind of heart attack, it's like, well, maybe I shouldn't eat so much fucking yeah. fatties, food. That's why, <laughs> like, I feel like you could kind of tell why. I would, I think the only, the biggest other reason why I would want to see how it happens is to know whether or not I'm going to die alone. Because that's one of the biggest fears that I have, Did you ever, see, did you ever see that movie, um, Practical Magic? Yeah. Yeah. That where, suck. where, like, their curse is that if they get with somebody, that that yeah. person's gonna die. Yeah, that would suck. So the girl, so she's <laughs> like, she's like doing her hardest not to fucking to get with anybody, with right? And then he yeah. still fucking, she does, and, and he, he dies. still dies. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That'd be fucking awful. If I knew exactly how I would die, yeah, I would, you know, I would want to know, am I gonna be alone in my bed? just peaceful am i gonna be surrounded with people who give a shit about me or is it just gonna happen because i'm fucking playing in a pool one day and some kid just so happened to knocks you on the head yeah <laughs> that almost happened to me when i was a little kid that's scary i almost um, drowned you too yeah me too well <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's something that happens i don't know well well no like okay i'll go first um so i used to live at this trailer park over here sierra uh-huh. shadows uh-huh, yeah. right across from Domino's. Um, there's a pool there. Mac Domino's, is that what you said? Uh, right across. <laughs> Mac No, no, I didn't say that. I just said, said I just said from Domino's. I did not say Mac Um I'm gonna use that now. I did not say that. Um, but, uh, so, like, there's a pool in that trailer park yeah. for the residents. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Um, and, like, I was real little. I couldn't tell you how old I was. That's how long ago it was, because I can't remember how old I was. But I was really, really little, so I had like a inner Slowly tube on. Thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't have any kind of supervision while I was in the pool. They were outside the pool, wherever the dun, si- dun, dun, they were sitting. Yeah. So I just held on to the edge, and just kind of was moving myself along mm-hmm. up to the deep end, and somebody knocked me into the pool. Like knocked me out of my inner my inner tube into the water and I was this is before I learned how to swim or anything else like that and potentially I could have drowned but whoever did it put me back well like, that's nice <laughs> like, yeah like it was like I another kid in the pool like an older kid you know knocked oh. me out and then like not knocked me out but knocked me out the inner tube yeah into the water but, but picked me up and put me back into it that's <laughs> like let me almost kill you Oops. like like I, I mean that's one of my earliest memories so oh yeah no uh, we'll talk about earliest mo- memories in the moment. That's a good one. But uh, mine, we were going camping with my dad, and it was like my birthday weekend. It was supposed to be really fun. But then um, we went into this river, and the drop off happened so quickly. Like, you take one step, and you were. How you know, old were you? Oh, I think it was like my 11th birthday, 11th or 12th birthday, something like that. And um, I was walking into the river, and by the second step, it was like up to my knees. Well, my smart ass would be like, oh, it's only going to be up to my stomach. So I took another step and I couldn't reach. And my brother, the river's current kind of started pulling me. So my brother was like, what the hell? I couldn't swim. So there's like an underwater drop off. Yep. So he tried to grab me, uh, but that wasn't really smart because I grabbed him, of course, and he couldn't (laughs) swim. So (laughs) So both of us are sitting here drowning. Yeah. And then our friend Jessica, she tried helping us out because she could tread water. She was able to swim. But then it was like a tug of war between both of us trying to push her down almost so that we could get up for our breath of air. And then we ended up just floating towards the side and, you know, it was all this whole, what the hell are you thinking? What the hell are you thinking? Why would you do that? And I'm like, shit, I don't know. I almost died. <laughs> so it just became a blame game of, ah, oh, shit, I lost my shoe. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, it floated down the river. My dad was like, what the hell are you all yelling about? And I'm like, daddy, I almost died. <laughs> and then it was like, I was like, well, you're the idiot. You know, it just, it was 
interesting. Your dad seems kind of aggressive. <laughs> huh? Your dad seems kind of aggressive. Uh, from the stories that I've heard. Yeah, he's definitely a tough love person. <laughs> definitely a tough love person. That seems like a, an old school Filipino guy kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. Is to kind of very just be very stereotypical. Kind of <laughs> I think it's just a traditional thing. Um, that Filipinos are like that. Traditional strict. They're the man of the house. They make all the rules and, you know. It just, like I said, I think it's just a traditional tough love. I think they were all kind of raised that way. <laughs> they break all the rules. They do, actually. Good point. They do break all the damn rules. Like, very two-sided. I can do one thing, but you can't. Um. Oh, early child is childhood memories. You said that was one of your earliest? That's childhood. one of my earliest. I couldn't tell you when that happened. Um, another one that I could remember is um, kind of being told, like, I'm going to be starting kindergarten. So pre-kindergarten, but right around the time I started, I was going to start going. Um, beyond that, I can't really remember anything. So, like, late four, early five. I feel like that's late. I had my first memory really, really young. Yeah, no, I hear like, stories. I, I hear stories about people and their memories, and, and 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 like mine does not go beyond that. That sucks. Mine was like. It's not like I was doing cool shit back then, so it's no loss. Danny, what? You raised your hand, right? No. You had early childhood memories. Yeah. You did. You remember of being bored? No. <laughs> I remember sucking my mama's titty. Oh God. What? That's too young. I, I wouldn't remember that before. <laughs> what a weirdo. I don't want to remember. What do you want from me? Remember what you remember. My first, the first memory I really remember, I, there's actually a picture of it too, um, which is kind of cool looking back at it. I think so my you mom look has at the it picture somewhere. and be like, I remember when that happened. Yeah, it's weird, but I was still a baby. Oh, I wasn't a baby. I was probably like two, three. No, I was like two because... By three, I remember my mom and my dad getting divorced, but, uh... Well, shit, Corey well, calls his kid a baby still, and he's, like, four or five. Oh, yeah, no. So, like, you can say, like, she's still a baby. Yeah, no. Four. Okay. He'll be five. So, I... No, I was, like, two-ish. So, I was still sucking on a bottle, and I was sitting on the couch, and we were getting ready because we were having a party the next day. And everyone was up late cooking egg rolls and... All sorts of things, and I just remember being on the couch with my brother. Both of us were just sipping bottles on this, like, zebra-colored couch watching TV. Like, I can tell you where the placement of everything is. If I could draw, I would totally be able to try it out. It was the craziest thing how much I can remember from that one memory, but I don't remember. Well, what's, what's the next memory past that? Uh, my dad and my mom getting into an argument that basically ended Like, what's the time frame, you think? a year probably about a year right so everything's still a little fragmented yeah like you're I lucky think. enough to go back a little bit further than me but like still like actually it's kind of like at the point where it's like i remember kindergarten on from there i can remember basically everything other than like oh, i don't really remember but like uh -huh. my my beginning of like this is my life kind of begins at round five going into kindergarten on the beginning of my life really starts like where you start remembering your day-to-day -day stuff and it's like okay i want to say second grade because when my well, mom and shit, my dad that's a long know, time that sounds like that's my like mom seven and, yeah that sounds like when my mom like i remember a little my first memories was when i was two and then i had one when i was about three and then i don't know maybe it's because my at that point my mom and my dad were getting divorced and then my mom was getting remarried to my step well to joey and then um, after that, like, everything was just in a haze. I remember bouncing back and forth. There wasn't enough stability to really remember. Like, I went just in first grade. I don't even, I don't even remember where I went to school. You went to Stead, didn't you? Didn't you go to Stead kindergarten through six? No, nah, second grade. I never went to kindergarten. You skipped so, kindergarten? Yeah. Can you do that? You were able to back then. Now. Now, I don't know. Bullshit. I don't know you went I to kindergarten. To. I swear I did not go to kindergarten. No. You can ask my mom. I didn't go to kindergarten. I, I went straight to first grade. You can't skip kindergarten. 
You can. No, you, you can. So where did you go then. to first grade? I don't remember. Some big building. <laughs> I think, yeah, it was some big building that kind of looks like... It was on a hill. It was on a very... It was like a dirt hill. I don't remember where Where that were was. you living? Off of Trip Drive. Well, like, where is that? Like, where... That is in the ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto it's where, like, though? by Whittakin and okay. Citro. Okay. Um, and then at one point we lived on Montello. Really? We started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> yeah. Rose didn't live on Montello. No, my dad did. Okay. That's, I was like, it was, I was living with my dad at that point, and my mom, we were bouncing back and forth. Because she was living in Vegas. That was before Vegas, because I lived with her when she was in Vegas for a little while. That was when I was six. Mm -hmm. That's, I was like. So you went to school in Vegas then? Nope. First grade? Nope. It was in between. I think they even pulled me out of school for a little while. Okay. Yeah. That's I'll find out like. later. Yeah, I'm not really sure. That was like, I I know that when my, yeah, like I said, I think it's just because I had a lack of stability with bouncing back and forth that it wasn't something that I can remember day to day as a norm. So then like second grade you went to stead. Yeah. So second, second grade to straight. six? Yeah. Can you remember all your teacher's names? Yeah. Miss Burke was my second grade. Miss Reagan was my third grade. Mr. Littlefield was my fourth grade. I had him. Miss Kidder. You had Mr. Littlefield? For fifth, though. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, no. Uh, for fifth grade, dang it, now you made me forgot. Oh, I had Miss Kidder. And then for sixth grade, I had Miss. I think she was a sixth grade teacher when I went. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. She was fifth grade with my brother and fifth grade with me. Maybe she was fifth. And then I had Mr. Larinetti for... So he wasn't, there wasn't, he wasn't around when I was in sixth grade. grade. Uh, it's Slagle. Oh, yeah. I think I remember him. Her. <laughs> oh, her, her, I mean, yeah. Wasn't she the one that had, like, the setup of all the candy and stuff like that oh, inside of her room? No, 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 no. Like, she would sell candy, like, during yeah. break and shit? No, no, no. Uh, so I was like, that would have been Vandervoort? <gasps> yeah, that's her, that's her, Ms. Vandervoort. I was on the other side of that classroom. That's where Lar Mr. Larinetti was. Okay. So maybe Mr. Larinetti took over your old teacher. Because that's where he was set up at. And then you went to O'Brien for two years? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I still remember to some of those teachers, too. Well, at that like, point, it's like, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. Because what did I even have? Like English. <laughs> social studies. <laughs> and science. My social studies teacher was Mr. Mashad. Shout out to him. He was pretty cute. He was, an, he was a Ducks fan. <laughs> See, I remember Are a lot. Are you talking about hockey? Uh, no. Um, Oregon, I'm not sure. What ducks? I was like yeah, the Mighty Ducks? From Oregon, no. The Ducks. To the college team? To, uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah, he graduated from there. See, I remember things, and I, my teacher was Miss Cannon. She was, For what? Uh, science. Okay. She was nice, but could also be very, very bitchy. <laughs> she gave me a B. On something, and I remember I'm like, I got the highest grade. What the fuck are you talking about? A B. I'm so mad. Yeah, I was very angry. I hated fucking. I hated middle school. Like those were the worst school years of my life. Really? Was middle school. It's that awkward transitional phase. I love middle school. I can agree with awkward transitional phase. I started off seventh grade being the hot chick, and then it turned in. To like an emo person, and then I became a chola, and then it was like a. <laughs> you were hanging out with a bunch of Mexicans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could have seven, passed for okay. one, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no. Hold on. It was a chola, and then I became like a emo person, because I remember that seventh grade year. I was like, in khakis and hoodies that were like two times bigger than what it needed to be. Are you saying khakis are emo? No, no, that was before my email stage. Oh, okay. So that was You're my chola stage. Okay, okay. Yeah, I had the khakis and I had like, they were all baggy and I had baggy sweaters and <laughs> I, hang out, I hung out with a bunch of Mexicans and stuff. And then eighth grade, I came back and I, I remember taking my picture and I was like in a red shirt with netted arms and I had like a skull, <laughs> it had like a skull on it and I had like, I don't know, corn rolls almost. It was weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I had my phases for sure. It was definitely a transitional thing where I was trying to find out who I was, but meh. <laughs> I never had anything like that. I was pretty consistent my entire life. I wasn't. You know, like maybe the things I got into were, you know, 
transitioned equally, but I was never like, oh, I'm emo, no, I'm jock, no, I'm nerdy. I um, guess I was kind of nerdy always. I was not. Maybe that's how I ended up with so many friends is because I was so optimistic to try a bunch of different looks and <laughs> so you like, different things. You and had your fingers in all of the fucking different pies of people. Yeah, basically. It was cool. It was fun. It was nice getting to know everybody. Um, but no, I didn't really like school until like high school. And that wasn't even until I was about ready to leave. <laughs> I've always loved school. That was never an issue for me. Yeah. You ever got suspended? Have okay. I ever been um, suspended? No. Yeah. No? No. Um, so this says, <laughs> Look at your last few days worth of sent text messages. Which single line do you choose to be engraved on your tombstone? What single line do I choose to be engraved on my tombstone? Um, anyone who gets buried with nothing more than you up, chiseled in granite to mark their final resting place, will instantly become my personal hero. And I promise to leave a bouquet of roses at your grave once a year until I myself die. What? What? No, the guy's just saying, like, it'd be pretty funny if your best text that you have is you up. Oh. Who dis? <laughs> you up? Best you out? Text. There was one year I did that a lot. Mm. In my younger days, maybe like fucking ten years ago, I'd always text people and be like, you up? You out? Like if I happened to be like downtown. <laughs> um, my most interesting text no not necessarily most interesting mm-hmm. which line would you choose to be to engraved be on your tombstone <laughs> I regularly clear out my shit because I hate having a messy thing so the only text I currently have is the one I sent to you saying still gonna make it <laughs> you know it kind of sounds really like a famous last words <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one on a tombstone. Um, so I guess he never got that answer. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good one to put on a tombstone. Um, <laughs> Danny ha- texted me one. <laughs> no, no, no. I think Some it has to be one that you sent. Oh, damn. I'm like, his is in the food court. Be back soon. <laughs> like, that would be great. I would and love to that. You never came back. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I sent. And it matches with that video that they show you of your death fucking choking on a piece of fucking... <laughs> chicken. Chicken. <laughs> uh, something... Uh, I guess along the same one, I sent Danny cold cuts, honey turkey, and beef. Maybe <laughs> 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 I died of a heart a clog. coronary. <laughs> yeah. Um, I asked my mom, what's the number to the gyne? Yeah. <laughs> That's um, what a terrible way to die. <laughs> okay, so I would choose a the one. A routine checkup turns into a fucking like she didn't make it. <laughs> I would have the one I sent my brother that says I told her she's gonna have a hell of a time when life kicks her in. Yeah. Kicks her in. Kicks her. Yeah, kicks in. Sorry. Kicks in. Hell of a time when life kicks <laughs> in. Dogs. Oh. Alright. <clears throat> But I do have one saying, you awake by chance. <laughs> like, eh. All right, well, this one's done. This one's in the books. <laughs> that was it. Uh, wait, no, you didn't answer it. What text would you put down? I told you, it's the only one I got. It's the one I sent to you saying, still going to make it? Oh, that's it? That's all I got. I, I, I don't like how I like keeping my shit nice and tight and neat. That's what so she I, said. I, I, <laughs> Just kidding. hey <laughs> um, Would you rather be feared by all or loved by all? Feared by all or loved by all? I'd rather be feared by all. What? That says a lot about me, doesn't it? You'd rather be feared by all? Sure. Than loved by all? Absolutely. That's scary. Get off now. <laughs> uh, would you rather die in 20 years with no regrets or die in 50 years with many, many regrets? Probably the 20 years. 20 years with no regrets? I really do not look forward to being fucking old at all. Like, I see old people and I'm like, I don't really want that. Really? Yeah. I would love to be an old person. Old people are cute and they're okay. very knowledgeable. They... <laughs> You're going to get that, regardless, but, like, no, they seem very bitter and miserable, but, I mean, 
who knows what this current generation of people are going to be like when they're fucking 80, but like... I feel like they're going to be worse. They're already fucking bad. Well, Complaining I mean, and whining about everything. <laughs> Damn it. They're going to be like, my potty's not heated. How am I supposed to poop? <laughs> <laughs> I hate our generation. Well, now, hold our on now. Sucks. Hold on a second now. Okay, don't knock that, okay? I've sat on heated fucking toilet seats, all right? I'm not... I'm, well, exactly. <laughs> and it's really nice. Exactly. It is really nice, but then people are a decade are going to be like... What the hell am I going to do with life if I don't have a heated toilet? <laughs> this is your fault. Fucking feminist, damn it. <laughs> Whoa, calm down, okay? I'm a feminist. Are you really? Yes. Uh, do you know what a feminist is? Because... I do. Talking about fucking heated toilet seats has nothing to do with feminism. No, it doesn't. But I, I'm a hater on... Well, no, I'm not a hater, but some things I'm just like... There's really? no way that you can hate feminism. You are a woman. Yeah, but there are some things that I am all for. What is your guys. idea of a feminism? Like, there's a there's million different things to describe feminism and its ways and how ugh like pay equal rights. That's what it's all about. So what do women not get rights to that men do? Are you kidding? Yeah, no, I'm not. All the fucking women in the audience that are listening to this are fucking like, what are you talking about? No, really. Women can get paid just as much as men, but in all honesty, I don't think women should. What? Yeah, no, I don't. Let's say, okay, so for instance, I work in an non-office. I wear heels. I do stuff like that. And then, you know, in the... If you don't there think is women male, are being treated unfairly against men? No, I don't. You're crazy. I really don't. You're crazy. I don't. Like, you don't think that there's an unfair double standard? There are definitely some out there, but in a vast majority, no. You're crazy. I don't. You're fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't. Like, That's crazy talk. Like, say, let's say, okay, so going back to the whole pay thing, like, a lot of times when it comes to, we just renovated our office, and every single time it comes to lifting a desk or something like that, everyone's like, call the guys here. Why? Why can't you just do it yourself? Sure. Like... Yes, men are built more, you know, masculine than women. Okay, see, but the argument but you're coming like, up with has nothing to do with being against feminism. No, it doesn't. But here's like where the, it goes. The, the they should get paid thing. more. Who, men? Yeah. In certain cases, I think they should. Uh, because if women sit no, here... No, 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 no. Hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Things. Hold on. People should get paid more based on what they do. Yes, that is correct. Okay. I don't think that women should, like get like don't take my feminist thing as like i'm pro woman i'm pro equal opportunity like i mean it can go for like two guys like if this guy does more work than this guy this guy should definitely be getting paid more yes but i go more into the area of feminism where it's like this person should get paid more than this person based on what they do yes not opposed to like I'm not saying, like, I mean, there are fucking lazy women out there. Yes. There are shitty women out there. Yes. Um, but being a, a feminist, it, it just irks me when I see women being treated in an unequal situation or an unequal way. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say it irks me, but, eh. I really wouldn't. Like, I'm not a fem... Like, I just... Yeah. I'm not, uh... And some, and, oh, God, what skit was I watching? It was a, a skit on, it was, it was a guy, and he was basically talking about, you know, when you're on your first date with a guy and a girl who should be the one to first pay. And everyone's just like, oh, it's the man that should pay. Well, why? Right. Well, see, see, I was like, oh, yeah, but see, so know. far the things that you were saying doesn't sound like you're against feminism. It sounds no, like you're I'm for feminism. No, I will no. I don't. I don't want to say I'm for feminism because here's the thing: people take shit way too far. Absolutely, sense, I agree with you. 100%. Yeah, like in a sense, people are crazy. Yeah, in a sense, there are some things where I'm like, women should be equalized. Yes, but in a lot of the things that feminine feminists spout off on now are ridiculous. Like, well, no, we that's should, why you've got to weed the yeah. fucking crazy. It's just like that's the religious like, nuts. Ugh. Yeah. And the fucking feminist nuts, there are nuts in every kind of faction that is out there. Yes, I totally agree with is. you. If there's someone that's just like, women, 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 that's not a real feminist. That's just someone that's fucking just jumping a on a bag here. wagon. Yeah. I f that's like, not a uh, feminist thing. That's why I'm like, I, I refuse to be labeled as a feminist because of 
things and people like that. I do not like to group. Right. I can see how some of those things will leave a bad taste in your mouth and and like maybe turn you away from those kind of things. But it's not, it's not like that. Okay. So you, I mean, by, by feminism, for me, it's a broader scope of things and believing in yourself and being fair to everyone else, which kind of sounds like a communist kind of ideal, but it isn't. It's like, it's equal pay for equal work and it's just, it's equal opportunity for everyone. Like, I know that, I mean, there are situations where it's totally like, obviously this is for a man or something else where it's like, this is obviously for a woman. But like in a situation where a man and a woman can be equal and they're not, that's where the feminist thing comes in. I can't think of a single situation where they're not. Where they're not equal? Yeah. I mean... Where a woman can do the same things as a Well, you and I are in jobs that are like hourly jobs where we're making hourly wages. It's not like I'm doing the same job as my female co-worker and I'm getting paid more despite the fact that we're doing the same work. We're being paid equal. But in other jobs, there are situations where someone's getting paid on um, their job performance uh, kind of fuck. (laughs) Where <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I can't think of a single instance where they pay differently. Well, like in Hollywood, they say that women are getting less pay than men are, despite the fact that they're just acting and it's a job. So it's it's not a matter of us going into an hourly job where you go and you apply for a job and they tell you what the pay is up front. It's more along the lines of where you go to a job and it's uh, you're getting paid by who you are, where you're not working with other people where women will tend to get less money. But honestly, we're living in a world where it's not necessarily true. But I know that in the movie industry, women are getting paid less than men are. Like, (laughs) this will sound ridiculous. Whereas a woman is getting like $4 million for the movie role, a man will get like $20 million. Where it's like, um, where they think a man is going to bring in more money more so than a woman is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're saying, like, oh, Robert Downey Jr., sure, we'll give him $20 million, but so-and-so, whoever she is, we'll only give her $4 million because, you know, that's how we feel. We feel like she's not going to be a bigger draw because they feel sometimes men are bigger draws than women. But that also goes in, like, other fields that are kind of like that, like business fields where it's one woman doing one job, maybe getting making less pay than a man. But hourly jobs, like we're doing, whoever comes into the position is going to get the same pay. Yeah. That's but but now that's kind of like a legal thing. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I don't know. Because, yeah, I can't think of any real instances where women are treated fairly differently. Not at I our understand. level, absolutely not. Yeah, no. In the bigger scope of things, I can see that, that women don't get paid as much as men. And is it fair? Not really. But I, well, mean, I, I think maybe women. like if you were to go to like a car lot, if there are female car salesman yeah they'll probably make less money than a male car salesman because whoever is paying them to do their job might feel like oh this dude is going to be better than the woman is a lot of people think that way and it's very fucking close-minded way of thinking which is where my feminism comes in my feminism me calling myself a feminist is being open-minded and against closed-minded people who are sexist and bigoted and prejudiced, and okay. and and it's, and it's like in that in that sense, I will I could sit here and say I'm a feminist in that sense. It's the feminist but, ideals, but like you know, like we yeah. said, those crazy people who yeah. are just kind That's of that's like, just like those craziness. If you're thinking that type of feminist, and if you're gonna spout off that crazy shit, no, sorry, no, <laughs> I will not say that. Like, just, no. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But in a sense of, you know, wanting things to be equal, sure. I do. I That's where my feminism comes from. That's where I call myself a feminism is, like, equal, equal playing field for everybody. I say equal while still being field, un- While still barely. being open to, like, I understand that yeah. only women can do this, only men can do this, but... yeah. That's why I was like, I, and I feel like at that point, that's where I'm contradicting myself, so maybe that's why I'm hesitant to say I'm a feminist. Right, well, I mean, if you've got, like, yeah. uh, a certain, uh, god damn it. <laughs> like, like uh, I don't know. Okay. Like, like, your experience with a certain group of feminists is, like, the negative feminists, the people yeah. who make feminists look bad. 
I can understand yeah. where you kind of don't yeah. agree like, with that. In this sense, yeah. Uh, okay, different topic. There's a, <laughs> we were on Facebook and some um, one of my friends had a post where he was like, what the hell's wrong with my generation? Um, and okay, so before I get into this, let me say, yes, in certain instances, not everything is black and white. Black and white. Not everything is um, black and right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, again, not everything is black and white. I understand that. Um, but he was basically told that pregnancy is not a choice anymore and that having kids pregnancy is not is a the... choice. <gasps> yeah. And then I was like, what the fuck are if you it's talking not a about? Choice, it what's definitely, the other option? <laughs> yeah, I was like, it definitely is a fucking choice. In some cases, no, it's not. For instance, infertility or rape, stuff like that. Of course, it may not necessarily be a choice. That may not be something that you particularly wanted for you. However, in a general sense, pregnancy is absolutely a choice. So he made a funny comment of, what did you think, the, the penis like just a... fell in you and it ejaculated what? itself? No, it's a two-person responsibility. Is he like a, uh, a Catholic that doesn't believe in birth control? No, I have... Hardcore no, right-wing was... conservative? I, I have no idea what he was, but I agreed with him. I'm like, what the hell? I, I think pregnancy is a choice. I mean, for the general population, pregnancy is a choice. And some girl was like, no, pregnancy isn't, because birth control doesn't always work, and this doesn't always work. And, of course, I understand that. But, like, my generation is just too negative. That's way, yeah, whiny. like, that's way too yeah. black and white. That's to, why I was to, like... That's such a fucking yeah, that's what I was just like, ignorant there's. statement to say. Exactly. And it turned out to be that she was a feminist. Hmm. Huh. Figure. That's yeah, why that, that's just the because shit one that person like, is a feminist doesn't mean that yeah. what they're saying represents the feminist ideals. Exactly. That's why I'm like, it's that shit that wraps it around that no, in a sense, I will not be grouped with you, no matter what word. So I think there should be a better word for describing the category of the non-psychos out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, every group, no matter what group it is, there's always going to be those people who make you look bad. And there's nothing you can do about that. The fucking what about Buddhists? I've never heard anything bad about Buddhists. I don't know any Buddhists. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhists also but, but from what I understand, Buddhism is a very... Uh, uh, the concept of Buddhism is kind of out there and chaotic. Like, Buddhism doesn't have any kind of control on its, on its borders. Not that everything needs to have some kind of control, but um, sometimes you need guidelines to kind of get yourself going in a certain direction, whereas Buddhism kind of has no borders and has no kind of anything to keep anything under control. Not that Buddhists are crazy or anything like that. That's, yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm like, I've never heard any crazy Buddhists out there. Sure. So... That's the only exception, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> is Buddhists. But, uh, like, what are, I mean, I don't know. There are your crazies, so I can, I can definitely agree with what you're saying. There are some crazies in every single group. Well, like, you know, I was thinking about this today, is me being an atheist. I don't believe in God, but there are people who will try to convince you that God exists, which is fine, but me as an atheist, I'm never, ever going to tell them, like... No, God doesn't exist. I'm not going to push my ideals on somebody else. It's yeah. I'm totally for everyone believing in God, believing in what they believe in, you know. Do you believe in afterlife? No. no. Do you believe in, like, spirits? No. Really? Yeah. Do you believe in ghosts? Uh-uh. What? You've never had a ghost experience at all, ever? No. Uh, no. That's crazy. Okay, well... You're the first actual atheist, atheist I've ever met. Danny's, I don't know. He's in between. I don't know what he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, like, it's because I believed in God for so long until it just didn't seem really realistic to me in any way, shape, or form. And I, I'm not trying to convince you of anything whatsoever. You do not have to believe in what I believe in. It just, it doesn't make any sense to me, and so far nothing has, and my mind is open to believing in God and those things, but nothing has come along to sway my opinion. Because I believed in God for about 27 years. Um, I, 
have always believed in God. So I, I just... I always did until it didn't make any sense anymore. That's just like... I always did, but when it gets hard, I believe that, you know, God would put you into something that you wouldn't handle, and he put you there for a reason. And I... I don't know. I believe in God, and I believe in karma, and I believe in... A now, karma is a things. different thing. I'm all for karma. Yeah. I don't like. believe karma has anything to do with God, though. I can agree with that. I think I that mean, God put things in your way for a reason, and karma... I feel like karma does actually tie into God, because maybe he put one thing in your way to screw well, you, you with know, another. Well, you know, karma is like a Buddhist thing, and Buddhists aren't really godly people. No, I know. Karma that. and God are kind of on separate, separate sides of the... Uh, yeah. I know, but... And see, again, it ties into God. I don't know. We'll stop about the God thing, but... I don't mind I talking that, about it if... if, if. It, I don't, or is it bothering you? No, it's not that it's bothering me. Like I said, I'm not like, preaching my ideals to anybody. No, I don't. No, it doesn't bother me that way. I just... And it, it does, you know, in a sense, whirl around each other, but... I don't know if you... I believe that God does, you know have a higher power and rules everything and you know there can't be good without evil and i think god has a plan for that right and see i'm all and about good and evil is. too but i don't think it has anything to do with god i do <laughs> and see that's where it's like your definition of god may be what the bible and everything else says but my definition of god doesn't well, no, like i don't, I don't need the bible. bible yeah i don't believe in you know like i believe i don't believe in a lot of things that the bible says you know and sorry, God, but yeah, I don't <laughs> believe. You yeah, I don't apologize. believe the things. I do apologize because I don't want things to come back at me like that. And see, that's what I used yeah. to feel. I felt like that for so long until it just didn't seem like there was anything really out there, and that we just kind of made our own destiny and we made our own choices and we dealt with our own actions and reactions and consequences based thereon. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I it just, it, honestly, it just it doesn't make any sense that God would make all these bad things happen but, to good people. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But see, now I feel like I'm trying to preach my side of the thing to, to sway you. No. So I don't, okay. don't want to. No, that's not to sway me. It really doesn't make any sense. Like, Why do bad if, things happen to Yeah, people? if something happened to somebody you love and it's just the worst thing ever. And therefore, it's not only affecting them, but it's affecting everyone around them. And suddenly, you're touched by it, and someone else is touched by it. And everyone is just going through this incredibly horrible experience. And it's like, does that sound like something that God would do? If God is supposed to be this all-loving, powerful being that created us to be a certain way, but yet, oh, you can have cancer, and you can have AIDS, and you can get this, and you can get that, and... You can be born without any kind of function whatsoever, and you can just be a vegetable from the day that you're born until the day that you die. It just does not make any sense. It makes sense to like, me. Like, you can live your you life perfectly. You can be the best person in the world, and something still bad can happen to you. And I think that, that he would put that there to make you learn. To make you learn and right, and babies it. come out and they die. And they have yeah. no choice to learn or do anything ever whatsoever. But maybe that path wasn't intended for the baby. Maybe the path of learning is for someone else. I like the parent. That. I don't know about that. I do. Like if... if. So a baby had to be born and die so the parent can experience that and go through that loss and that tragedy. To come and potentially out something better mm -hmm. or worse? Yeah. That's where I feel like your sins and your... your I don't know. Whether or not the... You know, and let's say that parent did demons. nothing wrong their entire life and they look forward to having this child and this child comes out and is born with some kind of Defect. cancer and leukemia and let's say this child dies. Yeah, I'm not saying the, can't, the child died because it's their karma. Yeah, but I'm saying it happens and it, it shouldn't be karma on the parent. I mean, it's not like there aren't evil people who have good things happen to them their entire lives and they have no kind of reprisal for what they've done. There are people who get away with murder every day. Yeah. And maybe the people that are set to murder, the karma is coming, or they're, you know, maybe God put that in their path for someone else. Like, I don't think that God does things specifically to you. 
I am a high believer that things happen for a reason and so, everything's like so a spider So you're saying web. God has no control over what happens. It just happens anyways, regardless of there being a God or not. No, I think that God has control of what happens, but he has a bigger plan than maybe what you believe in at that moment. That's what I believe in. I don't know. That's where I'm like, eh. But I don't need the Bible to tell me that. That's where, I, yeah. So it's not that you're pushing views or anything like that. I just think that it, everything happens for a reason and it's for a bigger plan that you may not understand at that point. Or that you'll never ever know ever. <laughs> no, you may not know. Maybe, like I said. You'll never know. God doesn't talk to anybody. Does no, God talk exactly. to you? No, exactly. You'll never so you know. So you'll never know. No. Does that make sense to you? I don't think God ever talks to somebody, but I think God may send a sign. I do. I definitely believe in signs, and I definitely believe in spirits and stuff like that. For instance, usually when someone I care about dies, the way that I... I don't want to see cope, but maybe connect, in a sense that they're out there and things are okay, is through music. Like, a certain song will come along that would bring a memory. For instance... I had a um, guy that I used to sing in church with, and he, uh, we were in alone in this room, and he knew I liked him, um, but he was also older than me, and he was a very good person. So anyway, um, there's a song that he played by Casey and Jojo on the piano, specifically for me, and um when he, um, I was, anyway, so when he passed away, I was kind of sad, because I never got to give him a hug, but I dreamt about him that night, and, um, I found out that same week that he was dead. He had killed himself. And on my way driving home from his funeral, that same Casey and JoJo song played. And this was years and years after the song came on, so it wasn't something that would have been, like, a repetitive thing. That's not and true. What do you mean? Oh, uh, sorry. That's not true. Um, I just feel like that was maybe Julie's way of saying that, hey, everything is going to be okay and it's fine. Well, like, and, and by saying that's not true, I kind of sound like I kind of interrupted your story. No, that's okay. Um, but, like, it, you know, something that I learned when I worked at this job in, in Denver, um, the radio was on the entire eight, nine, ten hours that I was working. And it makes sense why you only really listen to the radio when you're in the car driving is because I hear, like, the same ten songs every single hour. Like, yeah. they have a play track, like, a track listen. They play all day long because you're not meant to listen to the radio for that long. So that song could have potentially played in another hour. It could have. But the fact that it, I don't really listen to the radio, and of all the songs that came on, it was the one that he would have played for me. Sure. That's one thing. And it's not just that instance. It happens a lot. Like, almost every single time somebody dies. It's weird. Like, I haven't heard that song in, God, months. Months on the radio. Like, ah, a really long time, basically. And then... And if you were to hear it today? I would say hello. <laughs> I, would, I would straight up be like, hey, like, nice to see you again. Thanks for checking up on me. But same thing happened when um, an old friend of mine named MJ, he recently passed away. And I hadn't heard any of the songs that would remind me of him or that we would listen to. I hadn't heard any of that pop up on the radio or anything like that in the last, like, years since I was in, like, seventh grade. And then all of a sudden after he dies, it's on the radio. What the hell? That's weird. And then same with my grandpa. Or the one that had ALS. Same thing with him. So, um, after I left their house and he, I didn't get to go to any of the stuff, I was driving on my way home from work during his um, funeral and another death song came that would remind me of him. And I'm like, I called my mom. I'm like, hey, I think he's sending me a message that it's okay because I felt really freaking guilty for not being there. So, again, why would this one song pop up that I haven't heard in years, 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 years come up on my way home? It seems like every single time after a funeral, something happens that I'm like, oh, shit, it's this song. Maybe, but maybe it's just the, uh, I don't know. 
that's what I was like. I think that's the only sign that God is like, oh, hey, you're not going to get it unless so I do God's this specific thing. Hell yeah. Nah. God's everything. Nah. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe we but. should change the subject because <laughs> I have a very strong feelings about atheism. Okay. And I have we'll strong switch. feelings about not preaching my <laughs> stance to other people. Okay. So we can switch it. So let's pick another question. Um. Oh, <laughs> I was always telling my friend um, I would love to just lock her in a room so she could deal with her own feelings. But this question is, would you rather be locked in a room that is consistently dark for a week or a room that is consistently bright for a week? <laughs> We're still not talking about anything here. Um, I would want to be in a room that's consistently bright. Yeah, I think so. Because I could shut my eyes and try to, you know, close I mean, it and I've get slept some during darkness. the day before. Yeah, that's just like <laughs> But if, I was, if it was consistently dark, I don't think I could handle that. No, I think you can lose I think your I mind would, in a dark room. Yeah, exactly. I think I'd go ballistic and depressed and all sorts of like, what fucking time is it? Ah! At least if it's bright, it's kind of like awakening. Right, like and I awake, think it would be less sleep. of a shock to the system once you leave the room. Yeah. So if you see nothing but darkness and you leave the room, I think it would be really, really hard to adjust. Yeah. More they so should. than being in a bright room. How bright are we talking? That would be... A, <laughs> that's a good question. So like bright that. you can't see anything? No, I don't know. That would be a good... Uh, or just a room with lights on opposed to a room with no lights on. That would be a good, uh, good science experiment. They should make a movie about that. You should make a movie there about is, that. No, no, hold on now. There is a movie. There's this movie, um, and it's based on a short story called Dread. Um, and this guy, those, these three people, they're in college. There's two guys and a girl. The one guy's dating the girl. And his buddy takes the girl who's a vegetarian, and he locks her into a room. Uh, and he leaves, like, a... I don't know, slab of meat on the table. Um, and he just, you know, and he says, as soon as you take a bite of that, you can leave, right? Okay. And it's not like he changes the piece of meat to a fresh meat every day. The meat just sits there and rots because she's not willing to eat it. And it's just a way to test her and how he says that, you know, vegetarian, blah, 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 bullshit. And she, you know, it's like, just as soon as you take a bite, you can leave, you know. And she eventually does eat some of that fucking rotting meat, you know, just to show, the, like, the breaking point. Um, then he takes a dude, and I don't remember, I think he puts him in a dark room, but he, uh, he also muffles his ears. He, like, puts something on his head to where he can't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> In the story, he puts something on his head. In the movie, he's like, this isn't going to work. And he just, uh, he like makes it, like he fires a gun by his ears. Uh -huh. So he literally can't hear anything opposed to having something that's preventing him from hearing. So, I mean, there is kind of a movie like that already. And then there, there's like movies where people are buried in coffins and shit like that. Like, there's a Ryan Reynolds movie called Buried, mm. where it's, like, an hour and a half of him in a coffin. And that's it. Like, he has a cell phone, and he makes a couple calls <laughs> throughout the movie, but, I mean, like, that's the whole movie. If you were in a coffin for an hour and a half? Well, no, like, if you're sitting there watching the movie, like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, he's in this coffin, like, some people kidnapped him. Uh -huh. Like, I think they're ransoming him. Oh. And all he has is his cell phone. Like, they gave him a cell phone. Oh. But I mean, you're watching a movie and it's just him in a coffin for an hour and a half, which is, you know, similar to kind of being locked in a room kind of movie. Yeah, but I mean, for days at a time, I would totally love to see a movie with people. Well, no, I don't know if I would love it, but if you could take snips of locking someone in a room, please don't let anything bad from happen to me for saying these things, but if you could see someone locked in a room, for days at a time, 
just to see how they mentally go crazy and then bring them out. I bet there's, I, totally I bet there's, that. I bet there's stuff out there. That's, I was like, I would watch it. That's not such an uncommon, there are all kinds of like, uh, colleges that did all kinds of different experiments I would that love you to can see find. An, exp- an experiment of that, that would interest me a lot. But, but yeah, I would rather be in a light room than a dark room. Look, here's a movie called The Locked Room. <laughs> Is there? (laughs) Oh, look, it must be a ghost. Just kidding. (laughs) 13 killer films that take place in just one room. (laughs) Devil. Did you see that movie? No, but I don't know if I'd watch it because of its title. (laughs) Because that goes back to the whole God and the spirits thing and something's going to get me. (laughs) No. Um, this is why I'm a baby, because I don't tempt fate. <laughs> the Killing Room. Uh, unknown. <laughs> exam. 1408. I wouldn't really say that takes place in one room. Cube. Rope. I mean, yeah, I guess that's not really a locked room room movie. Hunger. Um, the Disappearance of Alice Creed. The Steam Experiment. Pontypool. What the... Okay, going... Sorry, I just had a thought. Back to the vegetarian eating meat. If you were locked in a room with, like, a rat that they just found out of a gutter and they would said I you can leave... It? Yeah, like, you can you can leave when you take a bite. <laughs> would I would you do just it. Eat it right away? You'd just be like, okay, fine. Arr, and then leave? Or yeah. I would, I would not... I would be like, okay, where the fuck do I bite this thing? Should I just, like, bite its ear and hope well, it's Well, you good? would probably kill it, rip its head off, and then skin it, and then just eat the meat underneath. I wouldn't want to eat the fur. Jesus, you're like a freaking, you're, no. I would just be like, okay, let me let me bite your tail off really quick. Don't worry, you'll grow another one. So, no. <laughs> Rats don't grow tails back. No, but. <laughs> Lizards I do. Know, I know that they don't, but I would trick myself into believing anything to be like, okay, I'm so sorry. You're so okay. you would rather eat the tail. Than eat its insides? Or eat like maybe the meat? It's got all sorts of fucking diseases and shit. No, I would rather like eat its tail or eat its ear. Or yeah, but cats do something it. Something that, what? Eat rats Eat the and inside mice? It? That's disgusting. What, do they look like a fucking cat? No. <laughs> I would, no. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> like, on, um... They never said where you could bite. Like, I on Survivor. Just... You know that show, Survivor? Okay, if I was on Survivor and I had to, like... and I was Because they do so... that on Survivor. I know. I mean, they get but... to cook it and shit. Can I cook the rat? No. That's just, like, if you just... If <laughs> I'm just in a just room. It, yeah, you're in... Someone it's me and a rat. Yeah, exactly. Somebody said, just locked you in a room. It's you and a rat. No a rat's not way. that hard of a choice. Uh, a harder choice would be like me and another person. Like if you were in a That's room with so another sexy. person, and the person who get who eats the other person first. Ew! No, I would. Uh, like that's a harder choice. A rat is not that hard of a choice. It's an animal. We hard. eat chickens. I would. Uh, I guess. I mean, rats people eat really rare steak. Choice, but I. Any, eating anything that's alive. You is, kill it first. <laughs> no, that's awful. I feel like if it's if I bit its tail, it would still live. It'd probably scream and squirm, but I'd keep it as a pet. Like, I don't know. So that's kind of gross. Eating the you tail. You let me live. Thank you so much. It's a sacrifice. <laughs> nah, eating the tail, I'd rather just kill it and eat the like the muscly part. Ew, gross. No, I'm not talking about like the guts and shit. Gushiness, gross. No, nope. nah, just yeah. like a little bit of the muscly part on like an arm or a leg, shoulder area. Oh, yeah, no, nope. no, nope. ew, gross. Yeah, no, I would probably just eat its tail or like eat its ear or something, something where they could still live. No, yeah, but <laughs> see, now you're holding a living creature in your hand. Yeah. The tail is no doubt wagging, and you're going to put it in your mouth and take a bite? I would rather do that, yeah, than sit here and kill it you and think rip you could do that? Off. Do you think you can bite through the, the, the rat's tail? Probably. While it's moving around in your mouth? Probably. Yeah. You hit, bite it hard enough, yeah. Like, you don't think you would reach a point to where you kind of make it halfway and then stop because it's so gross? If I ripped it apart and killed it like the way you're describing, hell yeah. I would... I would 
definitely. I think not. it would be easier to eat it dead rather than try and eat a little bit of it while it's still alive and it keeps on living. I don't think it would be easy dead because then I'd have to kill it. Right. That's sad. I would. I have a hard time killing flies. Why would I want to kill a rat? <laughs> <laughs> no. You can ask Danny. I don't. Li- I don't even like killing flies. I'd rather trap it and whoosh, you know, swoop it outside. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Nope. Sometimes you just gotta nut up. No. <laughs> no. I would rather not kill things. I have a hard time killing ants. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that probably comes from. Like, the atheist thing in me is I don't think it would be all that bad. I you do. probably would feel karma would come back on you if you killed the animal. I would. I'd be like, you just killed something's parent right there. Something's going to come after my mama. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> no. In this great grand scheme of things, yeah, no, nah. that's scary to me. It's just a rat. No, it's not a rat. It's a living thing. That could be something's kid right there. Would you, okay, <laughs> would you be able to kill a bad Someday. person? Would I be able to kill a bad person? Like a, like a serial killer? Nope. Or a rapist? Someone who mm. deserves to die? <sighs> I guess it really all depends on what exactly was done. Like. So you're saying that there is a point that you would be willing to kill somebody? Uh, I don't know. That's what I was like, like I said, it, it depends. If they were a threat to me or a threat to the people I love and stuff like that, and it was in my direct sense, like if someone broke into my house with the intention of killing so me, not, killing I'm my not kid, saying not in self defense. Not in self defense? No. But let's say it's your neighbor that was chopped up and killed by this, other, by this guy, and he's standing in front of you. Would I kill him? Yes. No. I don't think I would kill him. No? Nope. Even though, he, let's say he killed like three kids and two adults. Would and I like kill him then? like a dog and a cat. No. I would rather lock him up in a dark room and let him go Well, let's say that he's... Until he, he wants it, to let's kill Let's say himself. it's either you kill him or he gets a way to do it again. You have a gun, he's got nothing. And if it was put into my hands to either kill him or let him do it again... Like, it is a definite thing that he will do it again. Like, they're just going to let him out into the real world and blah, 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 blah. Then, yeah, I would probably kill him. Yes. Because you you would be I able know, to do that. Yes. Okay. If it was an inevitable thing, yes. Like, if if he went on and raped and killed little kids and the so like, choice was either kill him or stick him in a fucking kindergarten, hell yeah, I'd kill his ass. You know? Here's a popular question. What about, like, if you were able to go back in time and there's baby Hitler? Would I kill baby Hitler? Yes. Oh, would I kill baby Hitler? No. But if I knew who, I wouldn't kill baby Hitler. I would lock him in a room until he wanted to kill himself. Like, I'd, and that's Essentially where, locking a baby into a room is you killing a baby. No, I would give him food and all that good stuff. I just wouldn't give them, uh, actually, no, I don't know. Maybe I would give them love, but if I knew what they would be, I would never let them leave. Really Someone's knocking on the door. See? That's God right there. That's God and Hitler being like, Hey, bitches, don't talk about me. Ah. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. FedEx. Who's at the door? Oh. See? That's Hitler delivering a package right now. That's baby Hitler in there. It's fragile. (laughs) Alright, well, I think we've gone pretty long. Long enough. That's what I said. Okay, sounds good. Goodbye, All right. <laughs> everyone. Alright, that's Sequel Podcast. I'm Matt Bonta. I'm Vickers Thanks for listening. Boom, boom, boom.